All right, so welcome back. So we've seen uh, the decomposition uh, so far for when we had just linear factors, also repeat linear factors. And in an example we did before this one, we were dealing with uh, a quadratic factor as well. Well, this time we have the fourth scenario uh, that we could encounter, fourth possibility, and that is where we have a repeated quadratic factor. So if we tried to solve this equation, we would have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5, which would be a non-real answer. So we know that this thing is an irreducible quadratic. Okay, So we write the fraction for each piece. So for the linear, that would just be a constant over x plus 1. And then because we have a repeated factor, we need a fraction for each piece, each power of it. And because it's a quadratic factor, the numerators will involve linear terms. So we'll have that stuff over x squared plus 5 plus dx plus e over x squared plus 5 quantity squared. Okay. And then we want to multiply through by our common denominator. Right? That's always the process. So step one is to set up your decomposition. And now we eventually want to solve for A, B, C, D, and E. So uh, we first multiply everything by our common denominator. So on the left side, we're going to have 5x squared minus 7x plus 20. Right? We're just going to get the numerator. Equals... And then let's notice what we have here. Uh, so when we multiply by the common denominator, the x plus 1 will cancel. And so a is going to be joined by x squared plus 5 quantity squared. Okay. Second fraction, one of the x squared plus 5s will cancel out. And we'll be left with an x plus 1 and an x squared plus 5 to go with the, the x plus c. So we have plus uh, bx plus c times x plus 1 times x squared plus 5. And then finally, the last fraction, the x squared plus 5 squared, will completely cancel out. And that leaves us with an x plus 1 to go with our numerator. So we have dx plus e times x plus 1. Okay, so that's first step, just multiplying through. And now I want to go through and start uh, simplifying, uh, start multiplying some stuff out. So I'm going to do uh, a couple uh, intermediate steps here, first of all, uh, to kind of help me out. So remember when you square something, that's multiplying times itself. So that'll be a times x squared plus 5 times x squared plus 5. So the overall thing when I simplify that, uh, I'm going to multiply out the x squared plus 5 times x squared plus 5, and then I'll multiply by a. So distributing x squared plus 5, x squared plus 5, or x squared times x squared will be x to the fourth. Tack on the a, we'll have a x to the fourth. And then in the middle, I'm going to have a 5x squared and a 5x squared, so 10x squared to go with the a. So 10a x squared. And I'm going to have 5 times 5 would be 25, with the a would be plus 25a. Okay, so that's taking care of the a part of it. And then uh, here I have three things being multiplied out. So we're going to have to multiply two of them and then multiply the answer times the third. So I'm going to do this by taking, uh, leaving my bx plus c alone for the moment and then multiply this stuff out. I'm taking distributing through. So x times x squared will make that x cubed. Uh, x times 5 will give me a 5x. And then in the middle I'll have 1 times x squared will be a 1x squared. So I'm going to have 1x squared. And then 1, 5 times x would be 5x. And then 1 times 5 would be 5. Okay? So we just keep multiplying out. 
we just keep multiplying out. So bx times x cubed, distributing bx times all four pieces, right? All four pieces there. And the same thing with the c, distributing the c to all four pieces. So bx times x cubed one plus bx to the fourth. bx times x squared will be plus bx cubed. bx times 5x will be plus 5bx squared. And finally, bx times 5 will be plus 5bx. And then, like I said, everything also gets multiplied by c. So I'm just going to kind of write those underneath so because it's going to take way too much space to do it all on one line. So cx cubed plus cx squared plus 5cx plus 5c. Okay. And then finally, the last one there, we have to multiply out dx plus e times x plus 1. So dx times x will be plus dx squared dx times 1 will be plus dx. And then e distributing through e times x will be plus ex plus e. Okay, so now that is a huge, massive mess. So what I'm going to do is get my highlighter out and start equating coefficients. Start equating coefficients. So up first... I'm going to start with my ax to the fourth, uh, and I also have a bx to the fourth, and those are all the x to the fourths, and there are no x to the fourths on my left-hand side. So that's going to give me my first equation, a plus b has to be equal to zero. Okay. Then we continue down. Next power that I see uh, is an x to the third. So get out my little highlighter and I have an x to the third there. And I look through everything else, I see I have another x to the third there. And those are all the x to the thirds. And notice there is no x to the third in the original equation either. So that means we'll have this equation, b plus c, has to be 0. And we keep going. Up next will be the x squared variables. So I'm going to my highlighter here. I'm going to hot pink this time. I have a 5x squared. I have a 10ax squared. A 5bx squared. Uh, I have a cx squared, and I have a dx squared. Okay, so putting all of those together, I'll have 10a plus 5b plus c plus d. All of that has to be equal to the 5 from the original uh, expression there. Okay, so that's my third equation. Okay, we keep going. Up next we have our x terms. So up next we have our x terms. Uh, let me get the light green out here. It's not showing up very well. Let me see if this shows up a little better. I'm going to use yellow there. So minus 7x. So look through here, I have a, don't have any with the a's, I have a 5bx, I have a dx, I have an ex, and I have a 5cx. So putting all those together, 5b plus 5c plus d plus e. Right. And those have to be equal. In this case, that's going to be equal to a minus 7. Okay. 
going back to the original equation here. So that's my general equation. Okay. And then we put together the final piece here, which I guess would be purple is too close to the red, so I'm going to try orange. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so 20. And I have a 25A. I have a 5C and I have an E. Okay, so I put those together. So 10A plus 5C plus E has to be equal to 1. Okay, so there we are again equating my constant coefficients. Okay, so that gives me a system of five equations. Now, I could do a little manipulating here and be able to solve uh, in terms of A, B, and C, uh, really get those down to a single variable and then substitute that stuff in, and that would really get me down to a three by three system which we could solve by hand, but it would be still uh, a lot of a pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do is take my five equations here and put them into matrix form. Remember, if you're missing a variable from an equation, then in that case, its coefficient is zero. So putting that together here, uh, my first row for A and B would be one, one, Zero, 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 and then the equal sign, zero. So for the next one, B plus C equals zero, we'd have zero, one, one, zero, zero, zero for the other side. And we have 10, 5, 1, 1, doesn't have an E, so zero, and then that side's equal to 5. Five, oops, zero, five, five, one, one, minus seven, and finally in the last row, ten, zero, five, zero, one, one. Okay, so there's our big old system. Okay, and I'd ask you to. Pause the video for a moment uh, and try to put this into its matrix. Uh, this matrix is going to require five rows and six columns. So go ahead into your graphic calculator and uh, take a moment and do that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put my matrix in. Again, the way we do that is by going first to second and then uh, matrix, uh, choose the edit option, and then matrix A is the one we want to edit. And then I put that in as five by six, five rows, six columns. And then I've just entered my matrix in again as we've uh, seen it uh, on the example there. Okay, so I put my matrix in, and now I'm just going to do quit, second, quit. And now I need to do my matrix. So second, my matrix, we're going to do math. And again, we want to do RREF, which is letter B here. So I choose that. Go back, second, matrix. I'm choosing matrix A. Just hit enter. Just found an app that can get you in So let's get another commercial. Uh, that I got on this app again. I'm just using this so I can show you a graphic calculator. Uh, close my parentheses there. Uh, and then perform the operation. Uh, and that gives me these answers here, but they're kind of ugly. So I want to convert those to fractions. So I do math, fraction, 
and it takes my answer and turns it into fractions. Now those might be a little small on your screen. So we have 8 ninths, uh, looks like negative 8 ninths, 8 ninths, and then negative 1 third and negative 20 thirds. Okay, so those are our solutions. So let's put those back into our problem now. Uh, so we find out that A equals 8 ninths, B equals negative 8 ninths, C equals 8 ninths, D equals negative 1 third, and finally E equals negative 20 thirds. All right. <clears throat> Now that we know what our variables are, we want to write out our solution. We want to write out our solution. Okay, so that's where we just take each of the coefficients we've just got and plug them back into our template. Okay, and then we're just going to do a little bit of housekeeping uh, to make our answer look nice. Okay, so this will give us. 8 ninths over x plus 1. Plus negative 8 ninths x plus 8 ninths all over x squared plus 5. And then plus uh, negative one third x minus twenty thirds all over x squared plus five squared. And then I'm going to clean this up by taking my fractions and basically getting rid of them. And you can think of that as one of two ways either factoring it out, putting it in the bottom. So factoring the one ninth out, putting it in the bottom, same thing here, and factoring out the one third, or you can think of it as this is a complex fraction, so I'm going to multiply the top by top and bottom by three to get rid of the fractions. Uh, either way, it produces the same result. Eight over nine times x plus one plus negative eight x plus eight over 9 times x squared plus 5 plus negative x minus 20 over 3 times x squared plus 5 quantity squared. Okay. And that's fine as it is here, uh, as we've written it here, that's perfectly fine. Or, again, uh, if you wanted to factor that negative out, you can make this minus, that would be 8x minus 8. And here, factor the negative out, and that would be minus x plus 20 over that stuff. Uh, either one's fine. Definitely a very, very long and involved problem here. A uh, lot to it uh, with our system. It's pretty messy. Uh, with the variables and definitely messy as a system, but at least we have the technology that can at least make what would have been a lot more work uh, a lot easier.